Welcome everybody to the Potty Discover Scuba course. I am Kathleen Sheridan. I'm going to be your dive master instructor for today. Yay! And I just wanted to have a moment for you guys to introduce yourself to your buddy. Now your buddy, we're all from different areas around the world and we speak different levels of English, but we're going to work together today to learn how it is to scuba dive. So go ahead and turn towards your buddy and introduce each other. Now we are missing one person, so we'll have to have your buddy. Well, one person was not able to make it today, so we are going to have to have a group of three. I'm sure you three can work together. Okay, great. So now that we all know each other, we can get started and see what the scuba diving world is all about. All right, so I just want to start with what is scuba? Who knows anything about scuba diving? Have you, been, have you been diving before? Anybody? No. No? All beginner divers? What about snorkeling? <coughs> and snorkeling. Okay, Jan, where did you go snorkeling? Um, I've been snorkeling in the Caribbean and in Hawaii. Oh, very nice. Lucky. So, um, let's see, Sue Min, where did you go snorkeling? Thailand. Ah, okay, very nice. So, I personally think that diving is a lot better than snorkeling. Because snorkeling is really hard work. You have to kick the whole time, and you have to paddle really hard, and water keeps getting in your oh, snorkel. No. But when you're diving, you just kind of very relax and float around and look at everything. So it's really great. And that, um, you guys are going to be introduced to that soon. So, let's move right along and talk about what this course is. So this is a one-day introductory dive course, and it's actually two sections. Right now, we're just doing the classroom application, okay, just talking about what's going to happen. The second section will take place later in the water, and that's where you will practice your skills. I'm going to show you the skills here first, and then later, we'll do the skills in the water. Is everybody okay with that? Everyone knows how to swim? No. Okay, good. <laughs> um, all right, now just a note, this course does not certify you to be a qualified diver, okay? You still have to do your PADI open water course later, but this credit can count towards that certification, okay? This is just an introduction. Okay, so things that we're going to talk about today. We're going to learn how to operate some diving equipment. Not all of it, there's a lot of stuff. Just the things that are the most important today. You're going to find out what it feels like to breathe and move around underwater. It can feel pretty strange. Our bodies are not meant to be underwater for a long period of time. So it might feel uncomfortable and you may be nervous, but don't worry, we're going to be with you the whole time and everything will be fine. Alright, and the last thing we're going to look at is some basic skills and safety rules of diving. Because even though diving can be very fantastic, there are some dangers and we need to be aware of them so we can make sure that they don't happen. Okay, so one last note. During this time when you're diving, an, a dive master such as myself or an instructor <coughs> will be with you at all times. You will never be alone under the water and we're going to level off at a maximum depth of 12 meters or 36 feet. That's the deepest you can go at this introductory level. If you want to become an open water diver, you can go to 18 meters, or if you're an advanced, you can go down to 40 meters deep. So, first thing we're going to talk about is our equipment. As you can see, there are a lot of different things that divers need to use, and it's pretty heavy. You can try standing up when you have a full tank on your back, you're probably going to teeter around on the boat a little bit. But I have a few things for us to look at. Uh, obviously, I did not bring a wetsuit <laughs> or fins. I did not bring any weights. <laughs> I'm a little heavy. Um, but let's see. Does anyone have any uh, familiarity with any of these things? Have you used a snorkel and fins before? Mm -hmm. Yeah? OK, well, I'll introduce you to some things that you might not be familiar with. OK, for example. You probably are familiar with your mask, but I want to make sure that when you put your mask on, you make sure that all the hair is out of your face. If you get any of the hair inside the silicone, that means you could get a leak with some water. Okay? So remember to get all the hair out of your face. Now, one of the biggest pieces of our equipment is the BCD, and this is called buoyancy control device. Does anyone know what buoyancy is? The ability to float. Exactly. 
It's exactly what it is. So this baby helps you float. It's kind of like a life jacket. And of course, I'm not attached to the tank right now, so I can't show you how it can fill with air and decrease. But if you put this on, the tank will go on the back, we'll strap it in, and everything attaches here, so you're going to be very top heavy. But one of the important things is this tube right here. This will be attached to your tank. And when you push the top button, you're going to fill with air. What happens if you are under the water and you put air in your tank or air in your BCD? What will happen? You're going to go to the top. So you have to be careful. Just short, little touches. We don't want to hold it down because we'll grow too fast and we'll go to the surface. Okay? So to release air, you're going to hold up your tube and push the top button. Kind of like a thumb and forefinger. Now why do you think I'm holding this up straight instead of out like this? Water is good. No, I think we're okay with water. Think about air. What happens with air? Well, if I go here, the air kind of sticks in the middle. But if I hold it straight up towards the surface, the air can go out. Okay? So if you see me going like this, that means lift your hose. Okay? But that's something that I'll help you with in the water. You'll be fine. Okay. Now we have our regulator system. So I'm just going to gently put this around my neck. Uh-oh. There we go. All right, lots of tubes. And again, it can feel a little uncomfortable at first, but you'll be fine. So most important is our regulator. This is how we breathe. <laughs> Pretty important. When you're underwater, I want you to breathe nice, slow, and deep. Always breathing. Never hold your breath. Holding your breath can hurt your lungs when you go down deep, okay? So again, always breathing slow and gentle. Now, this is your primary. This is for you. This is called the secondary. If you have a problem, which you won't, you'll be fine, you can change to the secondary or and let your buddy breathe. You can share the same tank if you have if you have need for it. Okay. The other most important thing <coughs> is your pressure gauge, and this has two pieces of information on here. The top talks about how deep you are, and this one is in feet. Some of them have meters and feet. Sorry, guys, who are from European countries who use the metric system. And the top one here shows you how much air is inside your tank. This system is PSI, again, an American system. Uh, if you're in Europe or Asia, the system will be in bar, okay? But if you're at 3,000 bar, or 3,000 PSI, that means you have a full tank, okay? And it's gonna slowly go down. Everyone is different, but probably around 45 minutes or so, you'll use a full tank. Now, when you get to 500 PSI, that's when the dive is finished and you go to the surface. Even though you have air, you never go to zero. That's dangerous. We want to just stop all that and end the dive before we have any problems, okay? Does everyone understand these types of equipment so far? Okay, now, let's see, we have bar and PSI. Which one is the American system? PSI. PSI, PSI. very good. Okay, so now that we've gone over some of the equipment, I'm going to show you the, actually, I'll keep this on, the basic skills that you need to do in the water in order to pass this course. Now, the first thing is about your ears. You don't actually need any equipment. Have you ever jumped into a, a swimming pool and felt your ears pop? Exactly. That's because the farther you go down in the water, the more pressure there is. So that uh, motion of clearing your ears is called equalizing. And this is very, very important. So I want everyone to plug your nose and just breathe out gently until you can feel a little pop in your ear. Can you feel that? Yeah? That's good. That's all you have to do. That's called equalizing. As you go down deep into the water, you want to equalize often and as, ma as many times as you need to. But never force it, okay? If you have problems, you stop. And you can say, I have a problem with my ear. Something's hurting, so I'll say stop. 
Let's go up and try again. If we just go up one foot, there's less pressure, and maybe it'll work that time. And then, if it's okay, you say, I'm good, and we'll continue down. Okay? So that's the first thing about equalizing your ears. Now the second has to do with your mask. What happens if you get water in your mask when you're 20 feet below water? Are you going to go up to the surface to clear it? No, you're not going to do that, Anna. You're not. So I will show you how to clear the mask from water. So again, no hair inside the silicone. And then what you're going to do, we're going to practice filling and then clearing. So, I'm going to create a very small hole at the top, very small, and I'm going to put water up to here. You don't have to fill it all the way, okay? That's for later. Right now, just, just a little bit of water, all right? Now, the way to clear it is you have your head down, and you put your hand here. As you lift your head, you blow out hard. I want you to watch the motion right here. So. What just happened, other than the fog? <laughs> Did you see what happened on the bottom part? The force of my air pushed it out. So what do you think happens to the water? It goes right out. Water shoots right out. And if you have to do it two or three times, it's fine. It happens to everybody. You turn too quick, knock it, a little bit of water. Everything's fine. OK, so that'll be another skill that we'll practice in the water. And when we do, when we go into the water, we're going to go down onto our knees. And I'm going to look at you and I'm going to say, you, watch me. Wait, you watch me. And I'm going to show you the skill again. And I'll say, now you. Okay? And if you need to see it, again, say, one more time. One more time. And I'll do it as many times as you need. Okay? All right. The last skill that you must do is removing your regulator and putting it back in. Because again, what if someone knocks into you and your regulator comes out? Suddenly, you don't have any, any air. It's okay though, it's very easy to put it back. So, what was the rule about breathing underwater? Easy. Slowly. Slowly, easily. Do you ever hold your breath? No. No, we never hold our breath. So this is an example. You watch me. I'm going to take a deep breath, take out the regulator, I have to keep breathing, so I'm going to make bubbles. Just a tiny little bit of bubbles. Then I put it back in and breathe out. What do you think happens when I breathe out very strong? What happens to that water? Shoots out, just like it does with the mask. Okay? So same concept, just breathe hard. This one's with your mouth, the mask is with your nose. Okay, so one more time, you watch me. Take a deep breath, take it out, breathe, put it back in, and then you can breathe normal again. Okay? Do we have any questions about how to use the regulator? No? Okay, great. So, these again are skills that we're going to practice in the water, and you can ask me to show you as many times as you need. Now, I know you're all probably worried, thinking, I don't know how to communicate with you when we're down there. What if I have a problem? What if I'm scared? <laughs> so we're going to practice some hand signals. Now I gave you the sheet in front of you, uh, and this is for anyone else that's a little fuzzy, but I think we'll be okay. Um, there are many more hand signals to this too, but this is just the very basic. Okay, so if we start up in the upper corner, this means okay. Why is it not this, like Americans tend to think? We don't want to say, I'm okay. That means go up. That means go up. Okay, that means up yes, so you always want to say, I'm okay. Yeah, and if you're on the surface of water, and you're way over there, and I can't see this, you know what you can do? Okay. <laughs> or if one arm's busy, you know, and you're carrying something, I'm okay. You just want to make O's. <laughs> so, okay, okay, okay. All right, the next thing, this is something I might tell you, stay there, stop. Or I might say, whoa, calm down, something like that. Come here, that's the next one. Again, going down, going up. Go that way, go this way. 
If you don't know where to go, what do you think you're going to do? <laughs> you're going to go to the surface? Okay. So which way? Or, yeah, which way are we going? Where? Exactly. So, and again, they're saying, watch me is pointing. And I do that too, but I like to show you, you watch me, okay? Um, let's see, over here, level off. That means the deepest that you're going to go. How deep are we going to go for the Discover Scuba course? 12 meters. 12 meters or 36 feet, very good. So if I see you going below 12 meters, I'll just tap you and say, let's go up just a little bit, okay, a little bit. All right, let's see, we'll actually skip down to something's wrong. Shake your hand back and forth, something's wrong. And it could be anything. So if you have a problem, something's wrong, and point to whatever's wrong. My ears won't clear, something's wrong with my ears, my stomach hurts, or something's wrong with my tank. Just point to whatever you need, okay? And I'll come up behind and try to fix it. <laughs> Okay, let's see, something's wrong, I'm cold. Uh, water can be very cold, and hypothermia can be a danger in some areas. So if that's a problem, we'll, we'll end the dive and we'll go up, okay? Um, let's see, get with your buddy. We've already practiced this one, right? Get with your buddy, hold hands. If there's a problem and you look really nervous, it might make you hold hands. <laughs> that's okay, first dive I ever did, I had to hold hands for about 20 minutes before I was able to let go, so it's okay. All right, and danger is just a fist out front. Danger, maybe there's a problem with the tank. Say danger, something's wrong here, and we'll fix it, okay? All right, so first activity, I want you to turn to your partner, turn to your buddy, and I want you to practice saying these things. You can say the phrases out loud and practice the hand signals. Okay, so let's take a minute to do that. Everybody turn to your buddy and practice the hands. Okay. Okay. If you need to refer to your sheets, that's okay. How much are Okay, so maybe skip number two for right now. I think I forgot to show you. Go to one, three, four, and five. I have a problem. I have a problem. Oh. I've got some number here. There's one. Yeah, you point to your ear. It's just there. Okay, looks like we're doing all right. Who would like to demonstrate number one? Which buddy pair would like to show me number one? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> so I want you to communicate. I'm okay. I'm going down. What would you do? That's perfect. That's all you have to do. Very easy, right? Great. So I'm okay. I'm going down. All right. Skipping number two. Can you all look at number three, please? I have a problem. My ears will not clear. Yeah, exactly. Problem? and the ears. That's exactly it. All right, over here, number four, please. Get with your buddy, hold hands. Yeah, that's it, get with your buddy, hold hands, exactly. And number five, level off and go that way. Who wants to show? Oh, everybody knows it. Level off, go that way. Good, and the last thing, this was important. I should probably tell you what it means. I need to know how much air you have in your tank, so I know when we need to go up. So I'm just gonna tap my hand like that. Because your gauges are right about here, okay? So that means you just look at it and you tell me how much you have. If you have 2,000 PSI, say two. 3,000, three. If you get down to five, that means 500. It's kind of the opposite. But 500, I'm like, okay, we're gonna end the dive and go up, all right? Very good, you guys are doing great with your hand signals. And this is for mostly safety. Now, I do have a few. For fun, because when we're down in the water, we're going to see so many things, and you're going to want to know what some of these things are, right? Hopefully. Not <laughs> just uh, stare at everything with fear in your eyes. Okay, so some of these might look familiar to you. We have turtle. Does anyone know the motion for turtle? Just like that. Little legs for diving turtle. Uh huh. Good. 
Now we have a lionfish, and these are one of my favorites to find. They're actually all over the Caribbean, and they shouldn't be. But lionfish is like this. And these are actually poisonous, yeah, which are. brings up another rule of diving. No touching anything, okay? That's very, very important because there's many fishes that can be dangerous that you don't know about, and I don't want you to get hurt, okay? And we don't want to hurt them. It's their home, not ours. Shark. <laughs> and this is a black tip reef shark. They're actually pretty safe. And I've seen a few of these. They're very fast. They don't care about you. They look and they swim off. Clownfish. Just like a clown would, right? And then here, an angelfish. I wonder if you can guess. What? Think of a halo. Angelfish. Uh huh. And just a couple more. Triggerfish. You might be able to guess too. Triggers. Now, I thought this one would be a fun one because it's a combination. Clown, trigger fish. <laughs> you can just do both. Clown, trigger. Yeah, these are fun to see. They're very rare, actually, where, well, where I was working, so it was really fun to see them. Okay, this is a type of eel, blue ribbon eel. But there's many kinds of more eels, spotted eels, but always just eel. And then you just point where it is, usually hiding in the rocks. Up here, we have barracuda which are not as dangerous as people pretend. They do like shiny things, but they're not going to come after you. So you can see the different stripes on the side. So, barracuda, mm -hmm. barracuda. Mm -hmm. And then down here, can you see the fish? It's very camouflaged. Yeah. It's called a stonefish, because it looks like the stone. And again, this one is also dangerous. It's yeah. poisonous. It's poisonous. Here's, the eye, here's the eye, another eye, and the mouth. Mm. Oh, oh, it's okay. huge. It's huge. It's most of the picture, actually. Yeah. But um, they're very hard to find. And many people, when they're diving, just put their hand down whatever they want. So that's when I say, don't do that. Poisonous fish have really great camouflage. You might not see them. Okay? So, so, so what was the thing for stonefish? Stonefish, you can just have a, a just like that. The, the dangerous thing. Yeah. <laughs> and like a stone. I've also seen this. Uh, <laughs> I took him up very far. sample of the different fish that you'll see. Um, but okay, I think that everyone did a very good job and you finished the first portion of your Discover Scuba course and the next portion will take place in the water where you're going to practice the skills. Okay, great job everybody.